This is video three in, well, the evolution of our off-grid solar power system. I'm Eric the Old Jarhead, and welcome back to my channel. So today, I'm going to discuss the upgrade that involved those six panels. By the time I put those panels in, I had been using the original solar power system that I built and upgraded, which I, I talked about in my last video. I've been using that for a while. I think about five years, maybe six years by that time. And these three panels, which provided 605 watts of power, which, you know, let's go look at the back of them real quick because watts doesn't really tell us a whole lot, folks. You can convert it, but what we really need to know is amps. And they're about 11, 11 amps at 18 volts. However, in the winter time, when it's cloudy and snowing, we don't get a lot of solar charging off of them. We might only get 10 or 20 amp hours total. And I realized that at some point, these solar panels were just not enough. I always knew that I would want to add more. And originally I thought I would add at least three more or maybe six more. And that's why I put in the larger combiner box that I put in. I, I could have put in a smaller box. I put in one that I could put up to four or five or six solar arrays all together and it would provide me all the solar charging that I could use. However, one of the things that you learn about solar power systems very quickly is that they, <laughs> they change rapidly, almost like computers, folks. It seems like every year something new is happening. And those panels up there, those are all 305 watt, 24 volt panels. So. 205 watt 12 volt panels, 305 watt 24 volt panels. Honestly, that ground mount system in the summer provide more than enough power to keep my batteries topped up unless I'm running the freezer. Um, I have a refrigerator that doesn't have a freezer in it intentionally because that uses less power. But if I wanna run the freezer in the summertime, I need a little bit more power, particularly because you don't really want to drain your batteries more than 20% if you're using lead acid. Draining them more than that just shortens the lifespan of the battery. Let's get over here by the fire where I was last time because <laughs> it's nice and warm right here, folks. Oh, there we go. Let's get a, let's see if we can't stoke this fire up a little bit. Oh, there we go. Get some, a little bit of heat generated. It's so cold out here. It's supposed to be 39 degrees today and and sunny and when the sun comes out you know it, it's always a little bit better but man i'll tell you it just uh we're not getting it today oh so we'll sit here we'll sit here and get warm by the fire so summertime those panels provided mostly enough power for me like i said if i'm running the freezer I really didn't have enough solar charging to get those batteries topped up before nighttime. And that's the key. When you're living off grid on batteries, you need enough battery power so that when the sun goes down, you're good to go, not just that night, but maybe three nights without any more charging before you start to really sweat it. So if your batteries aren't getting fully topped off, before the sun completely goes down and you've got no more charging, that's not a good thing. So I decided I needed to upgrade that system. And this fire decided it needed to smoke all over me, but that's okay, I like the smell of, of fire smoke. The wind is just blowing right at me, folks. Let me move a little bit before my knees get a little, a little hot. <laughs> ah, there you go, wind. You can blow that way all you want. Get a little, get a little wood put here. All right. Anyway, so I really needed more charging power and I decided I wasn't gonna mess around anymore. It was time to put in some serious solar charging capabilities. I wanted to be able to keep those batteries topped off and run anything I wanted to run all day long and not need to run the generator, you know, unless I really, really had to. I wanted to be able to shut that generator off and not even worry about it till the next fall. Unless I was using some heavy electrical equipment, then I usually will run it because I don't want to abuse the batteries. 
So I got those six panels and I had to get a mounting system for them as well so that I could get them mounted up on the roof. And once I, <laughs> this smoke is just smoking out my camera now, look at that. The wind moved on me. Once I got those installed, the only other thing I had to do besides putting in a combiner box for them because I ran them in series parallel. So I put two panels together, they're, they're uh, 24 volt panels. I think their open voltage is around 36 volts. So you put two of those together, you get 72 volts. And then you take three sets of three pairs, three sets of two. You run them all into the combiner box, which then runs them together in parallel. So you're gonna get, <laughs> I keep getting smoked out. Gotta love campfires. So you're gonna get about 72 volts total from that system. <laughs> oh. So with those six, I've got over 1800 watts. So three times as much wattage as the panels on the ground, but at 24 volts. So your amps are even higher. So you're really putting out a lot. What that did for me was amazing, folks. Now, for those, I put in an Outback FlexMax 80 MPPT charge controller. That's maximum power point tracking charge controller. A little more expensive charge controller than the Morningstar that I already had. Yes, I could have gotten another Morningstar, but there were some things that I wasn't thrilled about with the Morningstar. And I liked some of the features that the Outback had better than the Morningstar, especially the face on it that I could just go click, click, click and see how many you know volts I've got, what, how many amps I'm putting into the batteries, all that kind of stuff. So now I've taken my system from you know, um, you know, an 11 amp, you don't usually see it though, to a system that's putting out over 50 amps and, and going straight to those batteries. So I could charge that system up in the winter in two hours if I'd used over 100 amp hours of battery power overnight, which sometimes I would use. So now normally in the evening in the winter, it'd be about 70 to, you know, 60 to 75 amp hours overnight. But sometimes you're really pushing it. Maybe you're watching a show and you didn't want to run the generator or something like that. You know, I could use 100. I think I've done 120 overnight before, but it's extremely rare, usually 45 to 75. But in the winter, you're going to use more. Your lights are on longer. You know, um, the sun is, it drops lower on the horizon much quicker. Even now, I mean, it's February. Right now, folks, it's February 10th. So if you're wondering when this video was filmed, it was 10th of February, 2024. So that sun has about an hour before it drops below the horizon, which would put us at about 4.30. So I'm gonna say that we will have no solar production, even if it wasn't that low on the horizon. You can get a little ambient. Look at that, the sun's actually peeking out a little bit, folks. There's our partially sunny day, instead of, instead of mostly sunny. Smoke rising out of the chimney on the cabin is always a welcome sight. So yeah, I mean, it's only, it's only 3.30 right now. Sun's almost down, we're barely producing. So we're gonna be using power from, you know, four o'clock in the evening until you know, eight o'clock in the morning before you start getting a trickle charge even. So putting in those panels up on the roof, holy cow, made a huge difference. I will tell you though, I wouldn't remove the panels on the ground. And the reason I wouldn't do that is because in the winter I can tilt those panels way up. They're sitting at 63 degrees now. I could turn them to 90 if I want. They'll catch sunlight reflecting off the snow. They also shed the snow much better than the panels on the roof. The panels on the roof, they don't shed snow well at all, folks. Oh, move my, move my chair again. <laughs> oh, we're doing the campfire dance, folks. Oh, but it feels good though. So those roof solar panels, they don't shed that snow very well at all. So even with all of that amazing charging power, yes, I still need to use my generator quite a bit in the winter time. Now, in a future video, I'm gonna talk about my LifePo batteries and what they did for me. But for now, suffice to say, if you wanted to build this system, you could put in 12 golf cart batteries run a 24 volt system, or if you put 16 of them in and run a 48 volt system, and there are some advantages to running 48 volts. But either way, folks, you could run the system that I have now. And honestly, 
it provides a lot of power for me. Now you're not going to live the way you do in the big city house with the air conditioning and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, baseboard heating and, and that kind of stuff. But if you want to be off grid and you want to have a, a you know, an off grid system, or if you just want to have an off grid cabin in the woods, between these three stages of my system, I think you could find something that might really work well for you. I will tell you that when you look at all the wiring in the cabin and all the different things I've done, these videos may be a good demonstration of why things happened the way they did. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to that for you a few other things. One, when I was living out here, I worked full time. So I was gone from 6 o'clock in the morning until, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening, five days a week. Sometimes I managed to get out here early when it was really, really cold in the winter. I'd sometimes finish up my afternoon last hour or two here at the cabin so that I could get out here and get that wood stove going again in daylight because, you know, daylight's gone at 4.30. But in order to change and adapt all these different systems, I was often under the gun. So... I literally would, would say, okay, I'm going to do this upgrade or I'm going to change this. And I'd go, well, I don't have wiring set up for that. So I'll run the wire right underneath the cabin, stick it through the wall, plug it into something and bang, now I've got power. Everything's working great. Have dinner, clean up, do the dishes. Now it's dark, you know, read a book or something, go to bed, get up in the morning, go to work. Well, 15 years of building the cabin and, and upgrading solar power for 14 years over and over and over again. Things keep just changing. Now I actually have the time to go through and redo everything and do it right. And that's what you're going to start seeing as we move forward. So suffice to say, for now, the system's working awesome. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope that helps somebody out. And by the way, if you like these videos, if they're helping you out, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button for me. It helps the channel out. I really appreciate it. I'll drop another video right here for you guys to check out. Appreciate your being here. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.